And welcome back, everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for the blue section of our Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. This is where we have, um, where we take a look at all 269 cards here in Throne of Eldraine and give in-depth analysis on how they could be used in Standard and what kind of impact they could have on the format as well. So far, we've gone over white. That video is up on YouTube right now. If you're watching this over on YouTube, hope you checked that one out as well. Whoops, and you can see the order up here at the top. We're gonna be going through white, then blue, black, red, green, and then putting multicolor, land, and artifacts all together for our last part there. All right, so we're gonna be giving each, we're gonna be talking about each card. If it's you know playable, how, how it can be used in standard, and then giving it a letter grade as well. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you go down to the info panel, there will be a link to the Google document that has um, the different ratings for all the cards and also our grading scale as well. I read through the grading scale uh, for the white video, um, but uh, I, I guess I should just read through it again. It's, it's pretty quickly. So uh, or I'll read through it again quickly. All right. So if it uh, will give the card an A, if it's a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks or be the defining card in a popular deck. Could also be an incredibly popular sideboard card. A B is a card that will see a good amount of standard play in a support role, or also a moderately played sideboard card. C is a fringe sideboard card that is used as filler for certain decks, or a playable build around card, or also a narrow but, ex but still pretty regularly used sideboard card. And D, is a card that you'll rarely see in standard, but can fill a role in a fringe deck or a fringe sideboard card or a very janky build around card um, as well. And then uh, the other cards will just give a limited rating and those are the cards that shouldn't see any standard play whatsoever. Those are just gonna be given the limited rating. So just an L. Okay, so that's how it works. So here we go. Um, we have Animating Fairy as our first card here. We have two and a blue for a 2-2 flyer. Also has Adventure. Uh, I guess this is our first Adventure card here for the video, so I'll, I'll describe this again. So the for Adventure cards, you may cast the Adventure part first. So while Animating Fairy is in your hand, if you would like, you can instead cast Bring to Life, which is two and a blue for a sorcery where target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 zero, zero artifact creature, and then put four 1-1 counters on it. After you do, you then exile Animating Fairy, and then you may cast Animating Fairy from exile at any time that you could normally cast a creature. Um, or, you, of course, you can just cast the Animating Fairy uh, on its own first. Okay. <laughs> this is also known as Please Recycle Me Afterwards tier. Wow. Um, so yeah, so basically three mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer is not standard playable. So does bring to life, bring it to standard playability. We have uh, three mana, a non-creature artifact becomes a 4-4. Four -four. I don't think we're really playing any bring to life. I can't, I can't think of any scenario where we're playing bring to life in standard. Just three mana to turn an, a non-artifact creature into an artifact creature. Um, so yeah, there's just, there's just not really any use for, yeah, a, a wind Drake card that has this attached to it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going with an L, just going L for limited here. All right, now next up we got our mythic. We got Brazen Borrower. So if y'all are a big fan of, of Brazen Borrower, let me know why you like this card, um, what you think this card could, could do here. Because I'm, I'm just kind of torn with this card here. So it has, it has Petty Theft is the adventure. So one in, one in a blue instant, return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So it's kind of like blink of an eye, but you know you don't have the kicker part and it, you can only target your opponent's non-land permanents. You can't blink, you can't target, you can't Petty Theft your own permanents. Um, and so then, so that's part of it. Then you also have uh, one blue blue for a three one flash flyer can only block creatures with flying. So it's basically just gonna be attacking a lot. Um, okay, so it's it's great in flash, a lot of tempo against control. Like a three mana, three one flash flyer is definitely very good against control, a good a good flash card there. Um, 
yeah, you can you can get back cards that are stolen. Um, so yeah, like that's that's like the floor is like is yeah is a, a three one flash flyer. There are there are a decent amount of like one power flyers kind of running around. Whether we're talking about like Siren Storm Tamer coming and trading with this thing, which a lot of people are playing that. And I expect the Azorius Flyers deck to be a deck where this um, you know could get could get uh, chump locked there. We have uh, Afterlife tokens that could be a thing. You know, like after you know like this card against Afterlife tokens is a nightmare. Um, so like there's there's some some real trouble with being one toughness. Um, did I say Siren Storm Tamer? I meant Spectral Sailor. If I said the wrong card, sorry. Spectral Sailor is the thing there uh, that I meant. Um, so you can use this with Wishclaw Talisman to bounce the Wishclaw Talisman back to your hand. Um, you can do that. You can do that. You can also just play three mana Teferi with that. And of course there is obviously three mana Teferi in the format that does reduce the power of flash cards in general. Um, so while I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of saying some of some downsides of the card, but this is, this card is, you know, going to be, uh, this card's definitely going to see standard play. It's, it's certainly good enough for standard and it will see a, a good amount of standard play. Um, but <laughs> yeah, this doesn't really feel too mythic to me. I, I don't really see this being like a a huge part of standard. Like I think like the um the flash uh the flash archetype um will will probably play this card. But of course that card needs needs you know like your counter spells and everything and it, it does it is a you know, a flyer that can attack the air. Like maybe you, maybe in a flash deck, you focus on countering their flyers and like their removal, let them have their ground creatures, try to race them with the brazen borrower here. Um, I think, I think Simic flash definitely, I think Simic flash definitely plays this card. Um, yes, but I'm not sure exactly how much it'll see play in other decks. I think it will show up in other decks. I don't think that that's the only place for it. I think just, you know, like, random decks are going to be playing this card. It's it's a it's a pretty decent card, but it's not I don't know, it's not like m mythic power level. Kind of thing. I do like that that's a good card. This is a good this is just a pretty decent sideboard card threat against control. Usually like, you know, playing 3-1 flashes are pretty good against control or just even like in <clears throat> in a control mirror, maybe you bring in like the borrower to get a clock in, maybe. Uh, maybe mono blue control deck has this like in their sideboard. If that starts being a thing in future sets, it's just a pretty good tempo card. So this is one of the strongest blue cards in the set. As I was talking about before this, I'm not really too big on blue, but I'm, while I, I think the card will definitely see play and it's, it's pretty good. I'm not in love with it. Um, kind of there. So an A is a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. And I guess that that's where we're at here. A card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. I kind of want to go A minus though, just because I, I don't love it. But yeah, I could see this being um, better than that. Um, you know, I, I could... So I kind of want to go A minus. Looks like everybody, you know, here people are saying A, A minus, B, B minus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jacob Foxen says, you know, A plus plus plus, best card in the set. Mark my words. Yeah, relative to the rest of the color, it could be an A. All right. So I feel like if, okay, I mean, we're just kind of arguing very thin edge here between A and A minus. Um, I'm going to just go with A minus, though. All right, fine. Maybe A. Because, you know, like, I, I did, like, uh, change my ratings for this set review compared to other set reviews, if you've seen them before, where I, I have 
uh, made it easier. I want to have more A's and B's and stuff like that. It made it easier to get those top ratings. And so, yeah, an A is just a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. And that sounds like Brazen Borrower, a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. So, all right, A. Charm Sleep, one white, white, enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. It, the creature doesn't untap. Um, I think the only way this could see play is if you're a mono blue deck and you got like no other removal and uh, maybe you have an enchantment matters sub theme in there. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's definitely a good limited card. It looks like everybody just says L. L. Okay. All right. Let's go with the L. Every, everybody's given Charm Sleep the L. Sorry, Charm Sleep. Uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to go D minus as like a card that is super, super narrow, but you could play it kind of thing. That's where I kind of wanted to go. All right. Corridor Monitor. One in a blue for a 1 4. When it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature you control. So it depends on how important artifacts are. You know, if you have like an, a, a big time artifact matters deck, uh, two mana one four is playable. Like I've I have played two mana one fours in tournaments before, uh, just trying you know as basically just a blocker trying to trying to uh, hold back aggro decks. Um, you know, like that's that's a decent blocker. It really is, especially whenever there's like one of the best aggro decks is. A cavalcade of calamity that's trying to just play a bunch of like little one ones and attack and having a one four is really nice in that kind of matchup um and then yeah if you have if you have a, a huge sub theme of artifact stuff so you know i'm talking you know I'm, I'm kind of talking the card up but we're talking about a very very fringe kind of card but yeah so i think i think this is a, a classic d a card you'll rarely see in standard but can fill a role in a fringe deck that sounds like a corridor monitor to me. We'll give this card a D. All right. Didn't say please. It's kind of fun to say. Didn't say please. Corridor monitor is going to go into a modern Vanifar deck. Hmm. All right. So one, boot, one blue, blue, instant counter target spell. Its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. That's already in standard right now, right? Like, isn't, isn't there a card that's the exact same thing that's in standard thought collapse. Yeah. That, that's what it's, that's what it's called thought collapse. And you do randomly every once in a while play against somebody playing thought collapse. So it's not just completely unplayable. Um, there is, so I'm going to go with a, a D here. I, I do think this set does reward cards for being in, being in the opponent's graveyard more than normal. So that's why I'm not going to go D minus. That's what we'll go D instead of D minus because of that, because of, um, cards being in graveyard mattering a little bit so we'll go with a d oh thought collapse only mills two i thought i thought it build three i thought it was the same but but i think thought collapse may be rotating out right now i think so like it rotates out and they have a new one i could be wrong on that i'm not sure no thought Colla no that was guilds of ravnica i think anyway Let's go to Emery. Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Um, two and a blue, one, two. This spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. Okay, so again, if you, you need some artifacts, you got your corridor monitor. You can decrease your price of Emery. Uh, when Emery, Lurker of the Lock, enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard, and then you can tap it and choose target artifact card in your graveyard, you may cast that card this turn. I think for other formats, this card is very good. But in standard, especially after rotation, there really is not very good artifacts. Um, one of the best artifacts there is, is the, um, uh, the glass casket. The card that we just talked about in white as a an artifact removal spell there um there's also some some good expensive artifacts but i don't expect emery to really do much in standard as of now you know maybe in future sets we get we actually get good artifacts um so 
Do not underestimate Emery with Golden Egg. Okay. Okay. The one with, with Golden Egg. Um, there are, I mean, there are like some artifacts in here. Um, I, I kind of like um, the 5-4, this Vantress Gargoyle. So there are some, and then, you know, there's Witching Well. So, so that's a thing. Witching Well is a thing. So the, there are some artifacts in Standard. I'm not sure if there's a critical mass to really make, like, a, a good competitive deck. But there there are things you can do with the card. Um, so that... Uh, so yeah, like I I'm not, I don't hate Emery, but I'm kind of skeptical. I think um, I think this is kind of like a C, a playable build around card. I think that's where we're kind of at. Like Emery's playable, um, kind of like uh, that's like Gargos level is basically. I think Emery is kind of similar to Gargos, like where you want to build like your Hydra deck, you can. You want to build the artifact deck with Emery, you can. I think that that's that's where we're at. Um, I could see Emery being, yeah, Mox Amber rotates out. I could see Emery being better in, like, Historic and just kind of over time how you have, like, Mox Amber and Historic and, and things like that. And I think Emery is better for older formats where they have better artifacts and a lot a lot more cheap artifacts and everything. But for Standard right now, I think we're going to go with a C for Emery. All right, it looks like some of y'all are a lot higher on Emery than I am. All right, Fay of Wishes. Uh, one in a white for a, or sorry, one in a blue. I'm oh, sorry, we just got to play all all these white ones. So now we're going to blue. All right, one in a blue for a one four flyer, and you can pay one in a blue, discard two cards, return Fay of Wishes to its owner's hand. I mean, if we're talking about Azorius flyers, we're talking about two mana flyer. I'm I'm kind of in there. I'm like, all right, I'm interested. What what do you got? You have five total points of power and toughness. I'm like, okay, okay, we got five. Like, that's, all right, we're in there. You know, is this like a 2-3, a 3-2? Like, we're in there. No, it's a 1-4. Start tapping the brakes a little bit there. All right, but then it also has the the other sorcery granted. Um, you may, so it's three and a blue. You may choose a non-creature card you own from outside of the game, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Um, so... Yeah. So, all right. So that's that part of the card. You know, we're going to want, uh, you know, we can get some cyborg cards. Uh, we have, um, a card that's very similar to, uh, what's the, what's the B masterminds acquisition. There you go. D before it had it right there. Yeah. It's very similar to masterminds acquisition, but a whole lot worse. You don't get to look in your library. You can only look, uh, in your sideboard and you can only choose non-creatures, uh, which is what you're mostly doing with masterminds acquisition anyway is choosing non-creatures so you're it's good that it says non-creature and not creature but um <laughs> yeah i have played two mana one fours i have played that before um but yeah this one flies and it has the granted part y'all are pretty high on this a bunch of a's and everything and b's i don't even know if, like i y'all think this is a very solid b and y'all are y'all are really high on this card i am not I think this is like a C. Also, I think this is just a pretty because like oh so like do y'all really like the granted part of the card, I guess? I guess cause like oh you think this is better than Masterminds Acquisition? Because because you can get the blocker early. I guess that's true. You can also just play it as a blocker. So that's that's what, so it's a masterminds acquisition that gets to be a blocker early. Yeah, you can use multiple times. You have to discard. You know, it's it's very, uh, it's very card heavy. You have to discard it multiple times, but you can bounce it in other ways. Also. Okay, looks like a lot of y'all are okay. See, that's that's what I need. Y'all are talking me up on this card. So yeah, you can use it over and over. Uh, I suppose it's very, yeah. Time wipe does work pretty well with time wipe. Okay, so you can you can go use granted to go find time wipe also, kind of thing. Okay. 
y'all are talking me up i i do see how like for best of one you know having access to a cyborg in best of one is awesome and having like a, a one four blocker in best of one against all the aggro decks is, is good too so yeah I, I do like this a best of one for sure but still even like best of three that's not it's not a bad card so are you all thinking like like just like a control deck is playing this and you're just playing this as like a blocker but then also like that's a card that could turn on removal spells you know like turn on like legion's end and stuff like that that like Allegiance end wouldn't normally be turned on against your playing control. Um, but like you're, so you know, like you help turn on your opponent's removal. Okay. So yeah, it could go in a lot of different card types. You'll like it as a win condition for control and stuff. Um, okay. Well, see, I would have probably put this at like a C, but you know, this is why we have the discussion here. We've got all, all of y'all in, in chat as well. Um, all right, so we'll go, we'll bump it up to a B, a card that will see a good amount of standard play in a support role, you know, like your scampering scorger type amount of play. All right, B. Yeah, yeah, definitely really like it best of one, being able to get like, but yeah, then just normal. Yeah, you can use hate cards, game one. It's true, true. All right, we'll go with B. <clears throat> All right, Fairy Vandal. One in a blue for a 1-2 flash flying fairy rogue. Whenever you draw your second card for each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Fairy Vandal. All right, so I'm basically looking at this card, you know, kind of thinking of the Azorius Skies deck again. I uh, you know, wish it was a 2-1 instead of a 1-2. As far as drawing a second card each turn, it seems like it works really well with um not siren storm tamer not that one spectral sailor we'll do that we'll say that correctly this time i think it works really well with spectral sailor i yeah i don't think this is good enough for the flash deck i think i think a uh, flash could maybe use like the three mana one one but not really good enough there if there turns out to be there there starts to be more cards for like a blue red rogue deck um rogue is an important creature type that it has for oh gosh red is way down here but anyway uh the mythic the red the red mythic two drop that cares about rogues um so yeah if if there's like a mono blue tempo deck uh fairy vandal could be decent in that i agree there um you know maybe historic you can you know maybe you can play this in historic with curious obsession that's pretty great with Curious Obsession. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, let's see. So I think it's not a B, but I think it's this is a, a fringe standard card used as filler. You know, like your Corpse Knight kind of thing. I think this that's kind of where we have our Fairy Vandal. I think that's a C. It's a, a fringe standard card, standard card used as filler. Maybe just a tad bit worse. Then your Corpse Knight, like maybe a C minus. Maybe, but it does have flash also, so it can it can see some play in some different spots. We'll go C. Yeah, maybe C minus. It's kind of right there, but I'll just give it a C. I'll, I'll be nice. All right, Folio of Fancies. One in a blue artifact. Players have no maximum hand size. You can play XX and tap. Each player draws X cards. So uh, for two mana, tap. Each player draws one card. For four mana, each player draws two cards. So like basically, you know, you get to Chemistry's Insight for both players instead of just you for four mana there. You can also go two and a blue, tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. It is very, very expensive. Yeah, Atriant says Narset exists. That's that's like the yep combo with Narset. That's that's the card that I could. It is kind of nice with Narset, but now so you had to have Folio Fancies in play, Narset in play, and then on your turn you still have to have like two mana to tap, and you just draw one card, and uh, or I guess you'd have to do it on your opponent's turn after they already drew their card. Then you can pay two and draw one card, or pay four and draw two cards. But then, you know, you, you have to also be, you know, also had to have your Narset out there and have all that extra mana. That's really tough. Um, <laughs> yeah, for unlimited mana, if you if you have unlimited mana, then you can have each player draw their deck. That is true. Um, 
yeah, Wilderness Reclamation, that's something that can give you a lot more mana. So maybe if you have, like, Narset, Wilderness Reclamation. But is there just not better things to be doing? Um, like, would you not rather just have I don't know, lots of other cards over this? It can be a, a mill win con that could be really slow. You know, if it's <clears throat> if it's like late game, they don't have any cards in hand and they just draw their card for turn, then you can like activate it and make them mill one. And then like each turn make them mill one. <laughs> this neck. No, I don't I don't Yeah. The thing about like blue mill, I think it's better to have cards that mill your opponent while you interact or while you gain other things than just a card that like you're just milling kind of thing because like think about like the esper mill deck that uh i've i've played a lot recently including just uh the other day i wouldn't want this card in the esper mill deck like this like i i really wouldn't i like there's i can't really see any scenario that i want to be playing this card in that esper mill deck um so yeah i i don't I don't like this card too much. So I'm going to go ahead, but it's it's not completely unplayable. I'm going to go with a D as a really janky build around card kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Mill is awesome in metas without graveyard strategies. Read it never. Um, maybe D minus, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go D minus. I am really not a fan of this one. All right, D minus. Frogify. One in a blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog creature with base power toughness 1-1. One, one. This is a, another pretty bad removal spell, but it is a removal spell, you know, like kind of, you know, it is an enchantment, so they can, it, they can always kill the enchantment. They have their creature still, and it's not exactly removal. They still get a 1-1. One, one. Um and yeah, this there's a, a card just like this in, in standard. Um, I think maybe even Frogify itself was reprinted. Um, but yeah, this is not really playability. Yeah, it's Kasmina's Transmutation, right? That's right. That that one. Kasmina's Transmutation. And like do you ever see Kasmina's Transmutation? Like, no. I mean i I have played against Kasmina that card like once or twice. Just you know, a couple of times, but we're just going to go with an L. <laughs> All right. Gadwick the Wizened. X BBB. No, U. X U U U. There we go. For a 3 3 legendary creature, human wizard, when it enters the battlefield, draw X cards. Whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target non land permanent and opponent controls. This card is my favorite blue card in the set i really like this card so let's talk about the second part first uh, i kind of want to talk about the first part first we get to draw cards have y'all ever played hydroid crisis where you can spend a lot of mana and draw a lot of cards you, know, you get to draw half of what x is this you get to draw whatever x is five mana you're drawing two six mana you're drawing three for six mana you're drawing more than hydroid crisis at six mana seven mana you're drawing four you're, you're drawing tw twice as many cards of Hydro as Hydro Crisis does at seven mana. Twice as many cards at seven mana. And it just continues. This card is awesome. Yeah, even when X is zero, it's still a three mana, three, three. Um, you know, like the more the more mana you got, though, you know, the better it is. It's the kind of card that you can play it at like uh, four mana, just draw a card. You know, it just replaces itself and it's a body um, that they kind of have to deal with. Uh, cause you know, if you get to just cast your blue spells on their turn, you know, cast like your opt and stuff like that, you can tap their creatures with that second part. That's a really powerful ability with that second part, you know, it turns opt into a temporary removal spell also, or like basically turning opt into like better revitalize kind of thing as like being able to gain life. And as, cause you know, you're top tapping down blockers. Um, you can also use it aggressively, you know, like if you're casting blue spells on your turn, you can tap their blockers and, and attack in also um of course the the real downside you know obviously it's legendary is a downside but then obviously the the fact that you have to be playing a ton of blue mana for it that's kind of a downside as well um 
but uh yeah this card this card is just pretty awesome it's it works well in blue of like you know being able to bounce it back to your hand if you want to replay it later but you get so many cards like imagine untapping with nissa and having you know seven mana for this and drawing four cards or whatever um that that can certainly happen like you know we've seen we've seen nissa decks play mass manipulation and being able to cast that like be able to have like eight mana for mass manipulation for two very easily well this is eight mana draw five which is just awesome um yeah it does yeah account yes if they do have a counter spell um yeah they do have a counter spell it's, yeah it's correct it's not a cast trigger so if you counter it you're not drawing your cards all that is true um no i'm not yeah i'm <laughs> yeah so like this card has a lot going for it that's that uh is basically what i'm saying is I, i'm not saying this is a better card than hydroid crisis what I'm saying is we all kind of overlooked Hydroid Crisis during preview season. And I'm saying how this can even draw more cards than what Crisis can and basically don't just overlook this card. Um, so that that's what I'm saying uh, about this card here, about uh, Gadwick, is that um, it's... Uh, like, you know, at you can just play it at three mana for it being a 3-3, three, three, where, like, Crisis at three mana, you're not... Um, you know, Krasis does get to gain that life, which is really important. It's a huge trampling flyer. That's really important, obviously. That kind of stuff just, just ends games where Gadwick doesn't. But basically, Gadwick is better early and is a better tool at just drawing cards. It's not really a better tool at winning games or, uh, or, uh, um, or gaining life, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, we, we wizened up. We wizened up on Hydro Krasis. Um, so yeah, basically this card, this card's really good. Can we get, can we get more heavy blue decks with like, uh, Jace and Gadwick and everything maybe, um, you know, but of course the blue green, like, you know, your Risen Reef, Cavalier Thorns kind of decks, like they can just get a lot of mana Gadwick in the late game, you, know, you get to play it can draw a lot of cards. Um, uh, that those kind of decks aren't going to be able to have a lot of blue spells to be able to cast for the second part. Uh, we'll see like how, how, uh, really necessary that is, but yeah, it could just be, a, yeah, you're so the, yeah, like your, your control decks, like your, uh, that have a whole lot of spells, your Demir control that's playing like enter the God Eternals and all that kind of stuff. You definitely have Gadwick for a card advantage engine. Um, you know, like your Magic Mirror type deck with lots of spells. Um, you know, Gadwick could could be your card advantage engine there. That also turns all of your instants into tap something as well. So yeah, basically, this is the kind of card that works good in multiples, even though it's legendary. Because as I talked about, like, uh, you play your first one on, on turn four and you draw a card. And, you know, it dies in combat. It's a 3-3. Three, three. You know, it still attacks and blocks pretty well. And so, you know, it's going to die a tur like two turns later. And then you have your six mana and you play your second one for six mana and you draw three cards. You know, you get uh, you get Ancestral Recall plus a three, three there. And then again, you know, like that helps you hit more land drops, keep playing on, helps you, uh, you know, stabilize because you got your more cards and everything and your Gadwick's going to die. And, you know, like three turns later. And then let's say you have eight mana at that time. And so then you play your third Gadwick and you draw five. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's. Very similar to Hydroid Crisis, except for it draws more cards faster. So don't overlook this one. <clears throat> okay, so if we're going to give it a grade. Um, is it going to be an A, where it sees a lot of standard play in multiple decks, defining card in a popular deck? It could be. This could be a defining card in a popular deck. This could be, you know, like a four of in, in, a, in a deck, or it could see play in different blue decks. Um, especially how important uh, mono color is like whenever we have theros like we'll we'll see that could this kind of could card could really jump out then um i'm not sure if i'm ready to give it an a immediately definitely no no less than a minus though i think earlier on either a or a minus um i think uh I think I may just go C 
so y'all are saying like b plus i'll go a minus with it being legendary and costing blue 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 those are downsides so we'll go a minus here uh ky you can the the set review is up on youtube for you to check out there but i i don't want to go back over like the the old cards all right hypnotic sprite is going to be a uh blue blue for a two one so a two one flyer so two mana for a two one flyer that's that's perfectly good for like an azorius uh creature flying deck that's that's uh definitely serv serviceable there it also has mesmeric glare two and a blue instant uh where it has counter target spell with cmc three or less all right so we have to spend three mana to counter uh cheap spells so we're we're never trading up on mana there uh, at very best we're going mana neutral spending three mana to counter a three mana spell but then you also get a two one flyer i'd be a lot more interested in this card if it was one in a blue i'm actually pretty concerned as far as like the azoria skies deck goes i'm pretty concerned that the mana cost for the flyer is uu the just the double blue there considering like we have like good white flyers with um like the different cards that cost a single white mana for a flyer curving that into a blue blue flyer is kind of rough so i'm i'm concerned about that um but uh and so yeah that this part is is useful it's certainly useful but it's not spectacular i think it's kind of just um in the flying deck I think this is yeah it's kind of like a maybe a c here fringe standard card used as a filler for certain decks i think that's what we're kind of looking at here for the hypnotic sprite it's just like a c so there we go uh i don't think we're really playing this in a flash deck no there's just a whole lot better counter spells and everything and probably not into the story five blue blue instant this spell costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard and it's a draw four cards i honestly really like this card so this is like a a you know like a demir control deck that's uh playing into the late game a kefnet deck for sure demir kefnet playing into the late game um you know you've milled over a good amount of cards from their deck you're probably playing a bunch of enter the god eternals and you're, you're doing other stuff to turn on uh drown in the lock a blue black instant that we'll talk about later with multicolor um and then you know if you're doing that kind of stuff this is a four mana in the late game not like you, not four manas and you can play it on turn four but four mana in the very late game four mana draw instant speed draw four which is incredibly powerful. If you have a Kefnet in play and you reveal this in the late game and you have, I mean, this is obviously like magical Christmas land, but you have a two mana draw four. That's completely insane. And th there is, there's the blue land that puts an instant back on top of your library. So maybe in the late game, this is in your graveyard and you put it back on top of your library and you have a Kefnet in play and you get two mana draw four. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty sweet. Um, I didn't miss it with this. Uh, so yeah, I I like it as like a one of yeah, and like the standard control decks. I mean, it's that's really really efficient, but again, it's not good until the late game. Um, it's kind of something that that you kind of want to build around uh, with that. It's it competes with like drawn from dreams. Drawn from Dreams always costs four mana. You don't have to wait till like the end of the game for it to cost four mana. Drawn from Dreams only is getting two cards, is a sorcery, but you get to kind of choose those two cards. That's that's the main competition for Into the Story. I think you do really want the instant speed to matter a lot, and you want the first part to be pretty easy to turn on to play this over Drawn from Dreams. Um, so like that's that's kind of like your your competition there whenever you're whenever you're deck building. Um, yeah but i could see this being pretty powerful especially with kefnet especially with um the ability to put the card back on top i mean if we're going mo like mono blue start like the only thing that mono blue is really missing is good removal but mono blue has some 
some pretty sweet cards. Like, what if we play this with, like, Narset's Reversal? What if we can get this to be cheap, like, four mana, and, you know, it's late game, so we probably have six mana, and you can Narset's Reversal it, put it back into your hand, you draw your four, um, hopefully you have, like, a Magic Mirror in you know, like, talking about, like, a spell-heavy deck, like, maybe you have Magic Mirror in play, because uh, you've been playing a bunch of spells, you have no maximum hand size, you just have, like, tons and tons of cards. Um, I don't know, like, you can dream. <laughs> you can dream. Yeah, Tan oh, yeah. Tamio buying this back from your graveyard whenever you want a four mana draw four. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Is this better than commence the end game? I think so. Yes. I think this is better than commence the end game. Uh, the only thing that you want commence the end game for more is if you really value that creature being a win con. That's the only reason why you want commence the end game more. Um, because you it's six mana you're only drawing two uh but of course that creature being a creature token is vulnerable to so much stuff including to fairy balance and everything and so that's the only time i really want to commence the end game more so yeah <laughs> you're gonna force mod of blue draw go control yeah i mean and then and then of course you have your your gaddix in there to draw extra cards also um you know maybe just have like gaddix and kefnet as like your win cons and then all sorts of draws card draw and everything so I want to give this a, a good grade because I like the card, um, but I you know I think it's probably like a C, maybe a C minus because you're still not playing lots of copies. So this is not a card that we're playing a lot of copies of. I'm going to go C minus. Maybe I should give it a C, but we'll go with a C C minus there. All right, mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me who is the most magic of them all. So we have six UUU, nine mana total, but it costs one last to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. It's pretty easy to get instants and sorceries in your graveyard if you want to build your deck in such a way to have instants and sorceries in your graveyard. Uh, check Crackling Drake. So you have no maximum hand size. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror, then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. Um, it is very, so this is very slow. So you play your artifact, you know, let's say it costs, you know, <clears throat> you're not really playing on turn three or four or five, uh, maybe on turn five, you can get it out there for five mana. Yeah. You could probably get out there for five mana on turn five. If you have four other instances of sorceries in your graveyard by then. But anyway, so you play it, it has no effect on the battlefield. The, you have no maximum hand size at that point probably doesn't matter. Your opponent's still probably playing stuff that are trying to kill you. Your opponent could play little to fairy to bounce it back to your hand. So if none of that stuff happens and you play it and then you get to untap with it, then you get to put a knowledge counter on it and draw one card. All right. So you, you got to draw a card. Awesome. So now you got to use that one extra card to help you stabilize and, and uh, deal with all those things that are, um, that are like trying to kill you and everything. And, uh, you know, keep your opponent from playing their Jace to, to bounce it again still. Or, sorry, their Teferi to bounce it again still and all that kind of stuff. And then if all that happens and you get to untap with it again for a second time, then you get to draw two cards and so on. So, yeah, it's 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 pretty – so that's pretty rough. It is very slow. But then, of course, it does steal roll. By the third turn, you're drawing three. The fourth turn, you're drawing four. You know, by your third turn, um, you know, if you get to ever draw three with this card – you know, you're doing great um, at that point, but it's really the trying to get, trying to make everything work to uh, get to that point. That's kind of about what I have to say with the card. Uh, does that actually happen? Who knows? Um, am I expecting to see have this see very much play? No, not really. Not whenever we have three mana to ferry everywhere. Um, the more kind of play this card will have, the more artifact hate there would be anyway. I think we're going to see the Great Henge, which is later, which is awesome, which may get some more artifact hate kind of in the format anyway. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to just be like, if I'm, if I'm trying to draw a lot of cards, I kind of would rather be playing a card like Gadwick, which I think can just help in a lot more scenarios for like a blue, blue, blue card. They can also be like, we can also just play it as a three, three to block and, and all that kind of stuff and play it like in the late game to draw a bunch more, a lot easier than magic mirror. 
Um, amazing art, very pretty art. I agree with that. Agree with that. Um, it feels weird if I give this like a D. I guess is this a playable build around card? So is it is that so is it a C? Maybe C minus. Like I'm more excited about Into the Story than Magic Mirror. Maybe D plus. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start kind of going through some of these next ones a little faster. Um, Mantle of the Tides. One mana equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you can attach Mantle of the Tides to target creature you control. It's an L. We're not, we're not playing Mantle of the Tides. Merfolk Secret Keeper. One mana, 04. Or you can venture deeper for one mana. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Um, so yeah, if, if this, the reason to play this would be the venture deeper. If you're playing a mill deck, I'm going to go D minus here. If you're like a, a fast mill deck that you want them to mill for and then play it. I mean, this is just L, right? Cause like we have, we have wall of lost thoughts in standard. That's two mana target player mills for and is an O for it. It's the same thing as this. Except for you can break this up. Or we're not playing Merfolk Secret Keeper. All right, L. Um, midnight Clock. Two and a blue artifact. All right. So, all right. So what are we going to do with this card? All right. So we got a three mana artifact that has tap add a blue mana. So already at least our, our artifact is doing something. If, we're, if we kind of think of this being like a three mana artifact, how this doesn't do anything ours does something all right we got a mana at least we got a mana rock you know so like there you know there's better things than mana rocks but that's that's usable you know that's that's serviceable we got a mana rock we can pay three mana to put an hour counter on midnight clock okay so we've got an extra mana we can just sink it into the midnight clock here at the beginning of each upkeep we put an hour counter on at midnight clock okay so kind of like at the beginning of upkeep we put a counter on this thing so but it's also the beginning of each upkeep so we play it opponents upkeep right away trigger put a counter on it if it goes back to our turn trigger put a counter on it that kind of thing and then whenever the 12th hour counter is put onto midnight clock shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library then draw seven cards so it doesn't even get rid of the midnight clock um it just shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library draw seven so hopefully you don't mind shuffling your hand back in also Oh, it, it does. It exiles. Well, I, it's a very, I forgot to read that last little part. So then exiles. So yeah, sorry. Then exiles. I thought it got rid of it. So that, that's why I was a little, a little, uh, uh, a little surprised there. Cause I thought it did, but yeah, so exile it. Okay. Basically for this card, I don't think you, we really play this card for that last part. I mean, I know that that's like the real big payoff. I know that that's um, really where you want, like if you get that midnight clock, like that's awesome. You know, you get to have a a pseudo draw seven. You know, it's draw seven minus however many cards you actually had in your hand. It could be a downside. You could have like no maximum hand size and have a lot of cards in your hand. And then suddenly you're like, have to get rid of them and get seven. I mean, that's unrealistic that that's the case, but I'm just saying it could. Um, but uh, I think... I think the real strength of the card is if you want a mana rock. So I think that if you're playing mono blue or just, you don't have to be mono blue, but if you're playing like a blue base deck where you have expensive stuff and you want a lot of mana, I think this is a really good mana rock. Cause I think, I think mana rocks are valuable. And so like, this is a, a mana rock that has a ton of upside. So if you're in the market where a mana, where you're like, well, maybe a mana rock could be good in my deck. This is, seems like it's something that you're like okay yeah i definitely want a mana rock because this this could be awesome um so hero says this is a bad azorius locket wow so i guess <laughs> yeah it's just 39 39 mana draw seven i mean you don't have to put any extra mana into the card it's going to trigger in six turns on its own you know because it's it's each upkeep so you know, so in six turns, 
you get that. So if you know if you're playing a real defensive deck, maybe you play your Midnight Clock and maybe you know, maybe you know then they like play their Teferi to bounce it, but like they could have bounced something better, and they're like, ah, I gotta bounce this Midnight Clock, and so they're annoyed at that kind of thing. Hey, what's up, Jay Gomez? Um. So. All right, yeah, y'all are saying bad locket. I I like it more than a locket myself because you can also speed it up if you have the extra mana also <laughs> in six turns you'll be dead anyway all right so i was trying to i was trying to talk the card up looks like y'all are not impressed but um it's also an artifact you know for the all the artifact sub themes um yeah you can go grab it with, with your karn and all that kind of stuff maybe i like mana rocks more than other people do but i like mana rocks so i think this is i think i want to give this like a, a c a c minus We'll go C minus, kind of similar to the into the story. C minus here. I think that that's a respectable card to play. <laughs> I don't want to spend four wild cards on it. So C minus. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we have Mirror Maid as our next card. One blue blue enchantment. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. What are what do we want to what are we actually wanting to target with this thing? Anyway, like what are we trying to what are we trying to copy here in standard? I do want to point out that it is of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield, so you do get to target your opponent's stuff. So you do get to copy your opponent's Oath of Kaya, and you have a three mana Oath of Kaya after your opponent played an Oath of Kaya. But like what's what are we really trying to do? <laughs> Copying the midnight clock? No. Yeah, not yeah. We can't really do the the legendary. We don't want to copy the legendary artifacts. Um. So. Yeah, like the gargoyle, I guess. But then we could also just have like you know the three mana clone effects for creatures. Wilderness reclamation, maybe. There you go. There you go. That's something you could copy. Wilderness reclamation. That's a valuable thing to copy. Um. I guess. If there's, you know, like your Ixalan's Binding type removal, but I know, and I know that one rotates out, but that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think I think this is all about Commander. Yeah, EDH, uh, maybe Brawl, maybe uh, if you got like how Gilded Lotus isn't going to be legal in Brawl. I say Gilded Lotus would be pretty sweet where you, you ramp into Gilded Lotus, you tap your Gilded Lotus for three, play your Mirror Maid to copy it and make another Gilded Lotus. Get some historic stuff going on there. Yeah, Jay Gomez, I, I changed the rating system so we have, yeah, to have more, to better grades than what we had before. Um, yeah, so are we just going to go... I guess D minus, I guess not an F. We never know what, I guess the other thing about this card, I'm going to give it a D. The other thing about this card that isn't about standard right now is that we're about to go to Theros. We know that last time Theros was a big time enchantment set. You know, it had all the bestow stuff. It had enchantment creatures. It was a big time enchantment set. So there could be like, you know, rares and mythic enchantments that are like really awesome in Theros in the next set. That could certainly be a thing and maybe Mirror Maid can do something there because it can also, you know, copy your own enchantments if, you know, that you have, but you're, you know, it's not a dead card if you don't have any good enchantments in play because maybe your opponent does and you, and so you just copy theirs to, you know, kind of kind of blank. You know, like if you just think of like a Cavalier of Thorns, I'm just, you know, just making up something. So like if you don't have your own Cavalier of Thorns in play, but your opponent does, you can you can play your Mirror Maid to copy it so you, they at least bounce off each other or trade or something like that, you know? So so you're saying, so Drown Secrets, Meteor Golem, Mystic Forge, Icon of Ancestry, Sorcerer, Spyglass, Wish Claw, Talisman. So yeah, not a lot of great stuff here. So yeah, so with Theros, um, I'm going to give it a D right now. But yeah, it could be better with Theros too. We'll go to that. Um, all right, Mist Ford River Turtle. Three and a blue, one five. Whenever it attacks, another target attacking non-human creature can't be blocked this turn. Because it's a it's a turtle. 
and you can't ever see that turtle coming. So you put you put your best non-human creature on top of the turtle, and your opponent will never see the turtle coming. It's just lightning fast. Can't possibly block the thing on top of the turtle. Yep, limited. Moonlit Scavengers, six mana, four, five. When it enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact or enchantment, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So that's also a limited card. That's not for standard. I don't think we need to take um, Exclusion Mage and add three mana to it and and just bump up its power and toughness a little bit and then also put a clause on it that you have to have an artifact or enchantment in, in play. All right, Mystical Dispute. This is definitely just a sideboard card, but two and a blue instant counter target spell unless its controller pays three, but then it also costs two less to cast if it targets a blue spell. I guess it's not just a, a sideboard card. If you are a very counter spell heavy deck, you can just have this as like a, a pre-boarded card also um if you are a counter spell heavy deck you could have this in your deck um but yeah this this is probably going to be a pretty common sideboard card counter blue spells for a single blue mana you know counter uh to fairy counter risen reef there's a lot of good blue cards right now oko uh yurok um lots of good blue cards right now in standard it says counter to fairy <laughs> and counter risen reef that is huge so probably a pretty popular sideboard card. Um, I'm not sure if it's like an A, like a Veil of Summer, like a really incredibly popular, but probably a little less than that, right? It's probably a little less than Veil of Summer. Um, so yeah, I kind of think B plus A minus also. So I'm not I'm not sure if it's closer to, to Devout Decree or Veil of Summer, maybe closer to Veil of Summer. We'll go A minus, I guess, but kind of the a minus b plus range but the thing about this card is it's you know you can also just use it against other things it's not just counter a blue spell unless they pay three um for a single blue man it also does other things so we'll go a minus it's flexible yeah i think it's kind of similar to dovin's veto because i mean because it is flexible how it can just counter anything you know you you can counter you can counter nissa you can counter cavalier thorns you just have to spend three mana, but then you can counter Risen Reef for one mana. That's just really flexible. All right, we got Opt. Opt is an <laughs> Opt S plus plus plus. Opt is awesome. We yeah, Opt is very good. Definitely an A. Um, I'm not sure about A plus. I'm not sure about A plus, but it's. To card, yeah, this is this is the definition of an A. Opt is great. <laughs> That's an A. All right, Overwhelmed Apprentice, blue, one, two. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Then you scry two. Hmm. I think this is just I think this is just an L because it's a, a one two I think this is just an L what y'all are going with like C's just for one two scry two I don't know if that's really that decent I think if it was a two one with scry two yes but a one two one power creatures are not valuable at all one power creatures it, it takes so long for a one power creature to kill an opponent. It hardly pressures planeswalkers. It just doesn't, doesn't pressure at all. One power, um, you know, like it, like we've seen it with like, um, you know, like even like, like Fibble Thip being like a one, one, it draw a card that just the one, one just doesn't really matter. Um, I know it's a one, two, so it can block one ones, but one power you got to be pretty good and i don't think that scry mill like opponent mill to you scry to um is i don't i just don't think that that's like when you have only 60 slots to put in your deck i don't think that this is one that you really ever want to put in your deck the only thing i can see is if we're talking about blue white human aggro or something if that's a thing 
I don't even think that, I don't even know if we'd want to put it there, it being a one, two. For, yeah, it's one mana. I would rather just play two mana and play O fours if we want to play a defensive card. I guess we get the scry two. But it's just, a, it's a one, two. It just doesn't. I'm going L. I don't, I don't think you want this in a mill deck. It's two cards. You're like you're not going to win a game because you have overwhelmed apprentice ever. Mill over two cards. Nah. I'm going an L for overwhelmed apprentice. All right, we got Queen of Ice. It is a tuna blue two three. All right, I guess we'll go. All right, we'll go D minus because we gave we gave some some pretty bad white cards D minus as like a L as a you may be played in standard at some point kind of thing for something. So fine, we'll go D minus. Queen of Ice, uh, two and a blue, two three. Whenever Queen of Ice deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And then Rage of Winter is the adventure. One in a blue sorcery. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. This is a good card in Limited. This is a very good card for Limited. I like it quite a bit. I don't want to play it in Standard at all. But that's that's a good Limited card. I've always liked um, Tappers in Limited. Uh, I like those kind of cards. Like... Little creatures that can attack and and uh, give me some tempo. Good limited card. Um, the O four we rated it. I don't know in L. Um, this site just type just for. For this site, it's just this is just Wizards Card Preview Gallery. Gallery. So just just go to Google, type in Card Image Gallery for Throne Throne of Eldraine. You'll find it. All right, run away together. One in a blue instant. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. I think this is just an L as well. I don't think we're putting this in our constructed deck. It's a cool card, though. Yeah. Good card to print. Awesome uh, flavor here, but not really for standard. Sage of the Falls, 5 mana, 2, 5. Whenever Sage of the Falls or another non-human creature enter the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Another L. And we got another L coming up here. I can just put, I can just do these ratings here real quick. All right, so so tiny blue for flash enchant creature. Enchant creature gets minus two, minus zero. It gets minus six, minus zero instead, as long as you controller has seven or more cards in their graveyard. I guess I'm going to go ahead and give this a D minus instead of an L. If if you are a mono blue mill deck and you want one mana removal, um, you know, just decreasing the power of a creature, you you can play this card. I don't like it, but they're, it's it's better than taking a lot of damage, I suppose. <laughs> we'll go, okay, all right, we'll go D. All right, we'll bump it up. It's it's playable. It's playable. It's not the best, but it's playable. Steel Clay's Griffin, Steel Gaze Griffin, uh, five mana, two, four, flyer. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Steel gaze griffin gets plus two plus zero until end of turn i think i think i would rather have cavalier of gales so we'll go with an l here stolen by the fey x blue blue this is a rare sorcery return a target creature with cmc x to its owner's hand you create x one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying i could the i could see this being a card um Maybe a sideboard card. Uh, blue deck, like, think about, like, last format. Blue decks was, like, 
like they had trouble dealing with like a Danto Vanguard. Like what if you had four mana bounce a Danto Vanguard and make two one ones? Is that playable? You have to do the exact CMC. You can't just like pay an a bunch a whole bunch of extra X. So you can't just like make a whole bunch of fairies. That's really like would would we rather have like entrancing melody? I mean, I guess entrancing melody is like rotating out, so we can't really think of that anymore. Um, so you can't just be like, okay, their card costs three, but I'm gonna spend X as five to make five fairy tokens. You have to do exactly what their card costs. Um, but yeah, you do get a whole bunch of one ones. You know, like if you if you bounce a five drop, you spend seven mana to bounce a five drop, you get five one ones also. I don't know. Uh, not not great. But yeah, like in a Skies deck, yeah, can you spend like four mana to bounce a 2-2 two -two in a Skies deck and get two 1-1s? One like, is that is that worth it? It's like four mana exclusion mage, but it has to, has to bounce a 2-2. Two -two. You can't bounce anything, that, you know. Like, are you going to have, you're probably not going to have five mana to bounce a three power thing. Yeah, if only it said X or less. Um... I think this is just a pretty narrow card. I'm going with like a, a D, I think. Yeah, this is just really narrow. We're gonna go with the D, but. I think it has real potential. Yeah, it's not X or less, it's, ex it's exactly X. And it's a sorcery there. Um. <clears throat> All right, Sir, Sir Elon Eleonora, Sir Eleonora. There we go, Sir Eleonora, the discerning. I don't know why that was so difficult me for me to say. Probably because I've been talking so much for the last three hours. All right, we have a five mana X four. Uh, the power is equal to the number of cards in your hand. When it ETBs, you get to draw a card and spells your opponent's cast that target it cost two more to cast. If this was just like a cheaper card and, you know, like that, maybe even the four was less, but if it was cheaper, but at five mana, I don't think we're playing this, but this could be a card. Yeah, very good for limit, very good for limited. Very good for limited. Maybe if you have uh, an ETB type deck, you know, maybe like a Vivian's Arcbow kind of deck, uh, where this is just like a, a a pretty good sized creature that, like, for blocking that also draws a card. That maybe you hit off. I mean, come on, we have Cavaliers at five mana though. All right, never mind. We have Cavaliers at five mana. Well, what am I doing? This is an L. <laughs> we have we have Cavaliers. All right, uh, Tome Raider. Two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one flyer whenever it enters the battlefield. Draw a card. Hey, what's up, Bord Borderin? Thank you so much there. So we have uh, we have the Elemental that's a 2-1 flyer that ETBs draw a card. I don't think we're... I don't think we need five of those Elementals. Do we need this for a Fairy deck, maybe? Uh, who knows, but... This is just getting an L for limited. Yeah, Cloud can see her. What do you what do you mean, Welsh Dragon? Um, we have turn into a pumpkin. Three and a blue instant. Yeah, it's it's just worse than Cloud can see her. Three and a blue instant, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card, and then uh, adamant if at least three blue mana was spent to cast this spell create a food token all right so you have you have blink of an eye that's easier to cast but you have to kick so it's it's a kicked blink of an eye that's easier to cast um and then if you're if you are using three blue you get to create a food token which blue decks could use food tokens because you know they could use that life um so so that's good it's just numbers for you Oh, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I forgot to, to do that. Okay, thank you. I actually, I forgot to do that. Um, <laughs> I actually forgot to title the last video that I, that I put out there.
Yeah. Thank you. I forgot to tell that. There we go. Change that. Uh, yeah, so turn in a pumpkin. Um, I see some people going like D, D minus, D plus kind of thing. I I like it. I I think it's I think it's a good D, maybe a D plus. I kind of think D plus. I I kind of like this card. No, no, never mind. You always have to spend four mana. You don't get the option to spend two mana. Never mind. I'm going D, not D plus. So yeah, I think I think it's a worse blink. I think blink of an eye would probably be a D anyway, or like pretty close to a D. So maybe D minus here. The fact that you always have to spend four mana. All right, I'm going D minus. All right, unexplained vision, five mana, sorcery, draw three. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast the spell, scry three. Um, this is just L. Uh, so do you do you scry after drawing? Here, I mean, it's still just we're just going with an L here. There's there's, a, there's better card draw spells in standard. Yeah, you scry after. I, I would still prefer to play uh, Precognitive Perception that you can play Instant Speed. I think that's going to be more valuable than this card that's always Sorcery Speed. And we we have good blue card draw. Um, I'm going L for that card. All right, Vantress Gargoyle. This is an interesting one. Two mana, five, four flyer. Can't attack unless depend defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. Tap it. Each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So you get to like have it on defense while you have your four cards in hand. And then, you know, end step, you know, activate that. Your opponent's end step, activate that, you know, untap, have it on defense and so on. And then it can be a, a good um, attacker later on. I actually like this. And yeah, it has all the artifacts, uh, you know, all the artifact matters cards would like this card. Um, it's not too difficult to keep four cards in hand in blue. There's lots of good card draw and everything um, as far as blocking goes. And, of course, because, of course, if you're in the late game where you don't have four cards in hand, like, let's say, in the late game, well, then you can just be attacking with it because then, like, your opponent, like, the attacking should be turned on at that point. So I like they can block early, attack late. That's that's the correct, um, like, that. that's what you want here. Uh and then yeah, you can you can have it as like kind of a, a win con, um, you know. If you want to like build a deck around like a like four gargoyles plus you get your clones out there, you start cloning your gargoyles and you just start turbo milling your opponent, like just machine gun style mill one, mill one, mill one, mill one. You know you can do that. Um, yeah, I guess the one mana adventure creature kind of works with this thing. I so I didn't give it an L. I gave it a little bit better rating. Yeah, I like I like this gargoyle, especially basically because it's the artifact. I really like that it's an artifact uh, for the different artifact matters stuff. So I think we're going with like a C plus, C plus here. It's still not something you're just putting in every deck or or anything like that. It's still like a card that's not that great on its own, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think so. It's still. Uh, a C plus. All right, Vandris Paladin. Four mana, two, two flyer. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast this spell, Vandris Paladin enters the battlefield with a one, one counter on it and can maybe enter into your sealed pool at that point. We have Wishful Merfolk, which is a one blue three two defender. You can spend two mana and Wishful Merfolk loses defender and becomes a human until end of turn. And maybe enters limited. As well. Alright, a couple limited cards there. Alright, last blue card here. Witching Well. <laughs> Fifteenth pick represent. Um it's just a single blue for an artifact when witching well enters the battlefield scry two and then you can pay for and sacrifice it to draw two cards so it's a good artifact for artifact matters um you know does the etb draw scry two it is 
that is true. It's five mana Glimmer of Genius, but you can spend the first mana early on when you weren't going to spend a mana anyway. So it, it allows you to, you know, you can break it up. But then, yeah, it's just Glimmer of Genius kind of together. So that's not bad. And, you know, it's an artifact which bumps it up. So pretty decent. It's not, you know, it's just like a, a support card. It's not going to see, like, tons of play everywhere or anything like that. Um, I'm looking at, like, B- minus to C+. Plus here probably or maybe even C um filler for certain decks i think that's that's actually where we're really looking at this where this is like a c like this is filler for certain decks so yeah but you know playable that's a that's a playable standard card so yeah we'll give that a c all right so that is blue let's go ahead and and kind of go through see what our top five cards are i think our top card is is going to be opt I think that's that's the best card in blue, is opt. Um, as far as kind of going through, looking at at our ratings, see what we gave there. So opt was an A. Mystical dispute we had as an A minus. I gave Gadwick an A minus. Um, Fay of Wishes was a B. Brazen Borrower, we just gave an A. And I guess that's that's all that was B or higher. So we have so those five are our, our top five. So that's pretty easy. So Fay of Wishes is going to be number five and then uh, um i'm gonna have opt number one i guess uh dispute and galvic are three and four so i guess opt is opt is number one brazen borrower is number two and then mystical dispute or gadwick probably go mystical dispute three gadwick four and then we'll have Fay of Wishes, five. So that seems to work there. Um, so yeah, there we go. All right, so that's going to be our top five. So I'll put that down below on the YouTube channel also. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube, really hope you enjoyed these. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and leave some comments. Let me know uh, if uh, what you think of, of my top five. If you think it, uh, if you have a different top five, let me know what cards I'm higher on or lower on than you are by like what you listen to the discussion. See if I if I missed anything, kind of that, or if people in, or you know if we missed stuff here on any of those. Um, but uh, there we go. So that's blue. Um, so as you can see up here, so we've done white and blue so far, and we're gonna be going to the other colors after this. So if you're watching on YouTube, hope you click on over to those videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.